Thank you guys for tuning in here with Nate and I want to show you guys exactly how I set up my external hardware to uh, send from Studio One back into Studio One like a plugin. So basically this is quite a simple setup. Once you understand the concepts of all of how this works, uh, it's quite easy to do. I want to explain it though because I know that I was confused when I first started doing this quite a few years ago um, and understanding the concept behind it. So hopefully it demystifies some of the things for people out there who don't understand this or are trying to connect their own external hardware. Um, it may help you in that. So let's get straight into this video. Let's go. So you can see on the screen in the top right hand corner, I've got the 500 series compressor right there. That is my uh, external hardware of choice. So it's like a similar, I guess, like an SSL kind of compressor. Uh, works very much like that, but it's a little bit better because you can actually control it via a plugin inside of your DAW and you can do recalls and stuff like that. So with that out of the way, um, the connections of this will be a little bit different depending on which audio interface you use. That routing system that you use in the audio interface is going to be a little bit different to what I'm doing. But inside Studio One, it should be very similar the way you set up your routing. So first off, I'll explain my audio interface so you understand the concept of the routing because it kind of gives you an ind indication of how this all works and what it does. So I use a Zentour. Um, this is a um, interface by Antelope Audio. The interface, as you can see here, it's a lot of color and numbers and all that sort of stuff. This is very confusing when you first see it, unless you know what you're doing. Uh, but I've been doing this for a while, so I've got it all down. So pretty much the interface, I'm using a Thunderbolt cable to go out of my, in my computer into the interface and it plays back through my speakers and all that stuff. So just remember Thunderbolt. It's not USB, but if you're using a USB interface, it's obviously your connection style. So the routing setup here, my preamp is what is allowing me to receive the audio. So if you just remember that preamps in blue, the line out is what's being sent uh, from the DAW using the interface. So I'm using channel 17 and 18. So if I just highlight these two and show you, they're the two channels that I'm using to send out of the interface. Uh, via a plugin inside of Studio One. So we'll get into that in just a minute, but just so you understand the concept of the routing part of it. So the sending is happening from there. So if every bit of audio I want to send to my compressor goes from 17 and 18, uh, or it could be whatever channel you choose it to be, then on the receiving end, it comes back in number uh, five and six on this. But what I've done here, so the preamp, so you can see, sorry, it comes in set channel seven and eight, I should say. Um, so these two, seven and eight, they're both set up to go down to here. So on my routing, on the receiving end of the, the interface, it's actually channel 17 and 18. Uh, so I'm remembering 17 and 18 goes out and then 17 and 18 receives in uh, on my interface. So it's basically going out of the interface uh, to the compressor, which you see here. The compressor then processes the signal, sends it back into the interface back in the D2A and then the D2A converts it into a digital signal and then it ends up back in the, the Studio One project as we're working on. So that's my setup for the Zen Tour. So if you have a UAD interface or some other interface, um, you need to have at least a minimum of uh, two in connections and two out, uh, additionally to the speakers I'm talking about. So if you have your speakers connected to the back of your interface, you need to have something to also have two channels that you can send out and then two channels where you can receive in. So that's the basis of the setup for the interface. So with Studio One, basically inside of Studio One, if you go to the PreSonus tab here, you'll see a little symbol next to it. You just click on that and then you can scroll down and you see here it's got a pipeline mono and a pipeline stereo. Uh, these two are pretty much exactly the same thing. One's this mono, one stereo, that's self-explanatory. So the way that works though is in your setup here inside of Studio One, you've got your little routing tab. And if you click on this little thing that says 44.1, that's the processing uh, bit sample rate, uh, that will bring this page up here and allows you to go to your IO setup. Inside of the IO, it's got the inputs and outputs. So this is pretty much straightforward. It's just exactly the same thing I was showing you just a bit before, but it's also labeled and you can do all sorts of color arrangements and stuff like that. But pretty much what I'm doing is I'm allowing the interface on the outputs, I'm sending a stereo, so a left and right channel. That's the channel 17 and 18. If you look up here, it lines up with those two there. So that's 17 and 18. It goes out from the inter sorry, out from the studio one. And then on the inputs, it's, it's exactly the same thing. It just lines up back here. You've got left and right channel. 
17 and 18 on the receiving end. So I've allowed this to communicate with Studio One exactly the same as it has inside of my Zen Tour, and that's my setup there for routing. Uh, if you're using a mono pipeline, which I showed you just here, you would just create one single channel, which I've done here. This is a mono channel, and I've just got one tick box. So it identifies these two channels as mono. So if I do recording inside of Studio One, that's where my audio comes from, from my microphone. So just so you understand the concept of that, that's how the routing works inside of Studio One. So if you just have that set up, uh, however you have your DAW with your interface, that's how you'd set that up. Inside of Studio One, the plugin, I would generally grab the stereo because this is a stereo channel we're sending out and receiving back in. So pretty much I'll just remove this and I'll show you exactly how it works. So if I was going to put on an individual channel, I could drag it across to that particular channel, uh, provided it's a stereo track. If it's a mono, I was obviously set that as a mono. It's got the labeling done, it's color coded, and that's my sending channel. So this is going out of Studio One, I click that. And then on the receiving end, I click that. So this, just remembering this is where it goes from, and this is where it comes back to. Now you hit this auto button and that sends a ping to the device. So it actually sends a little click, which tells the device uh, that this is the time that it takes from the door to the interface, to the hardware, back from the hardware to the interface, and then back into your DAW. And the time frame between that is 47 milliseconds. It really depends on which interface you're using. This isn't like a thing that you have to type in the 47 milliseconds. That's actually how long it took to get from the, all of those things back into Studio One. So it shows me then, it lines it up automatically by hitting auto, which is just a great feature of the new Studio One 4.6. Uh, actually, I think it's been out before that, but anyway. So it allows you to do that. So you hit the little wrench and that takes that away. So it allows the sound to go through. Uh, you can put the wrench up if you want to see the, the difference in the, the loudness as well. So it shows you the timing and also the difference in the loudness of signal coming back and forth. Uh, so that's kind of key to know exactly the timing between the samples and the offset of those samples uh, between you know sending and receiving. So if I take that out, I'm just going to remove that because I don't want it on that channel. Uh, but I'm going to also put one on the main bus out. And this is what I would use as my ideal console. Uh, my mixing console bus out. So I like to, to kind of work like an SSL. So if I was having all my channels here and then I'd have my main compression on the final bus uh, and then use it as a bus compressor. So that's the setup there. We've got the Wes audio diode set up. So we're just going to hit the auto, align the timing, and you can now see that there's a bit of a, a difference in timing again, 47 milliseconds, hit the wrench and a little tick there. And we'll just hit play on our Studio One project. see there's a little bit of volume drop because the compressor is actually being active at that current moment. If I bring up the plugin for the compressor, I'll just show you exactly how that works. Um, this is not going to be applicable generally to most people, but if you're using Wes Audio, uh, their stuff has plugins for most of their equipment, if not all of it. And it is very, very useful when it comes to recall and things like that. But now I can control my compressor. As you can see here via the plugin, I've got a complete control over this uh, compressor now via this plugin. So that's kind of sick. I really like the way that works, um, but that allows me a bit more versatility as far as recall and just working inside of the box, uh, but having analog gear. So I can actually bypass this via uh, the, the plugin here. I'll just put that here and hit play again, and we'll see what it does. And we'll try and level match just so you can kind of hear and see what it's doing. setup is so simple to be able to do this it's really ridiculous how easy it is so hopefully this is a helpful tutorial for you guys and it does show you how to set up your external hardware 
Uh, this can be done with EQs, compressors, I guess delays, whatever you want to put on your channel. It doesn't really matter. It's up to you. It's your creative mix that you're working on. Uh, but it does really uh, allow you to use a compressor or whatever inside of the plugin format, I guess, in the door like a plugin because I'm pretty much putting this through pipeline. It, it corrects all the delays and stuff like that. It does work on all that stuff behind the scenes. So you don't have to worry about that. You just do the creative side of it and use your, your you know, your compressor or whatever as a plugin. Uh, you may not have this plugin here, so don't worry about that. But if I was using this as an analog equipment, I'd have my hands on here. I could work around, mess with that. And then if I didn't like it, just bypass it like that, as simple as that. And then I can hear the differences that it's making inside the mix. So I hope you guys enjoyed this. If it's helpful, remember to like the video, subscribe to the channel, uh, make your comments below about the types of equipment you use on your uh, DAW. So hopefully you guys enjoyed this and I'll catch you on the next video and peace.